All right, holy moly, it's so much to put together sometimes. Holy moly, if you are tuning in, thank you so much. We are having a magnificent day. Why do I say that? Because I love it when the market turns red, because there is things happening, there are narratives at play. We knew a lot of this stuff was gonna happen. The secret sauce for today is success is built on persistence, not perfection. Again, do not beat yourself up ever. The world is there to do that for you. On the docket today, the FBI is using NFTs to return about $1.14 million. Vitalik Buterin, he likes dApps and stable coins. What does that mean? Reports on an alarming crypto survey for all of the crypto bros. You do not want to miss this. And Shiba and the Dow is about to begin a new journey. Meme coin madness continues. We have chaos, the clarity, noise, and narrative. It is Monday, August 26th, and it is time for some rare bits. Today, the Crypto Greed and Fear Index is coming in at a 55, plus one from yesterday. In the neutral, back into the greed, we will take it. Bitcoin dominance, Ethereum dominance, they have both slid on the 24 hours. Total crypto market cap, it was flat this morning, but we have slid down a bit as the market has turned red. Top crypto search term for the normies is sun.io. The ticker sign is S-U-N. It is up about 249% on the seven day. Again, this is just in sun and the Tron ecosystem. We have 71 days until the election. And these are some new News updates that I want to touch on super quick. Pi Milestone, PayPal's stablecoin, has reached a market cap of $1 billion. The majority of this supply is circulating on the only chain. It can happen. Salada! Durov, he has been charged. This is absolutely depressing. He, the French prosecutors have accused the Telegram CEO founder, Pavel, of complicity, complicit, com child exploitation, drug trafficking. This has sparked a tremendous amount of controversy in the crypto community. We are here for it. Please let me know in the comments what you think about what will happen to Pavel. Polymarket has been praised by Vitalik. This is kind of market a flurry. Polymarket's rapid growth and success are something that Vitalik has recently commented on and he likes to see it. We have a crackdown that is happening in Thailand. If you are traveling there, be super careful because they are raiding illegal crypto mining farms. So be careful especially if you're mining crypto. A lot of these guys are mining, these crypto farms are off of power bridges that they're illegally doing. So they're taking city supply and they're diverting it to mine Bitcoin, doing it all on the down low. That is making things not good for the entire industry. Before we get into some more news, let us check the numbers for the nerds and see what is happening. And I can already tell you that that means it is beer time. And yes, it is. Look at that market. <laughs> Okay, and see, absolutely everything is red. So we're going to probably do a spot check and look at some of these things along the way. Currently, we have Bitcoin trading at $63,234, Ethereum trading at $2,689, BNB 550. Going for that 600, we have a reversal. Solana 158. I'm surprised actually to see Solana hold up so well. XRP trading at 58 cents, Dogecoin 10 cents, Tron 162. Normally, this is where we mention Tuncoin, but it has moved down in market cap and been replaced by Cardano. So, Tuncoin trading at $5.13. These allegations against Pavel are not good. The team at Telegram says that they have an absolutely sound ecosystem. But if the ecosystem is sound, why is the founder in prison? So there is a story to unravel here, and we will get into it in the coming days, I am absolutely sure. On my list, everything is absolutely in the shitter. Well, not the shitter. I mean, it is the way it is. We're August. We're not doing too bad. On the day, who's doing terrible? Moomoo Bull is down 14%. We're up 37% on the week, so you got to take the good with the bad. Everything, you know, max, we're down about 13%. We will take it in a day in the middle of August when there is turmoil everywhere. Now, we are looking at DEX volumes, and I just wanted to pull up just the most recent months. July was actually a pretty good month. I think August will turn out hopefully better than July. We had a 5% increase in the last week, which is nice to see. And I just want to pull up some of these volumes down. So Uniswap is back in the lead. PancakeSwap, Orca, Radium, 
Sun is number five. So we saw this go all the way up to number one for a brief spot when kind of system launched um, Sun Pump. It has since lost some of that fanfare. Do you think it will last over the next month, three months? Just some things, it seems to be a contender for Solana. If we see that happen, it will be an interesting narrative to follow. You, follow. Excuse me. And as you can see, all the top meme coins by market cap are down at the moment. And let's just look at, let's see if I get, this is a difficult chart to get to sit still, but on 826 at 418 p.m., so that was about an hour ago for me, Shiba Inu down 15%, Floki down 17%. This is all on the 24-hour. Popcat down 18%. Book of Meme down 18%. Doge down 21%. Pepe down 29%. Whiff down 30%. Brett down 31%. Bonk down 31%. D-O-G-S down 34%. Now, to me, when I look at days like this, Anything that goes below 18% on a drop for the day, if it is on my list of tokens that I hold a bag of already, I usually DCA in a bit. That is, to me, the start of a good number. I don't care if it drops further. This 18% drop in a day, to me, signals, hey, you bought this weeks ago at a possibly higher price and we're perfectly happy with it. Be happy with it now. Don't lose the conviction. Continue to do your research. Make sure the narrative did not change on the particular token. But these are gifts to me because we are getting close to this parabolic activity. Looking at the poly market, breaking news. Microphones muted during the ABC debate. Why is this interesting? If you guys remember um, when Paris debated Mike Pence, Right, and that was some time ago. They were both running for the vice president and they had debates. What was interesting about it is twofold. So one, I think, if you remember to me, Mike Pence, I, I was a fan of his. He is the perfect kind of vice president to have. He, he was steadfast in his honor and his duty, and I don't think he spoke out of turn very much. It was weird toward the end, but he was a very polite, civil, individual, almost like from a military background, understood his role and f tried to fulfill that role with honor. Now, when you put him in a debate with Kamala Harris, she was all over the place. She would cut him off every single second. That gave her an advantage because he was very polite. So if ABC decides to mute the microphones when the candidates are not talking or talking out of turn. It will present a much different playing field. Keep in mind, Trump is a wicked showman. Kamala Harris, not so much. So these, these numbers, as far as who will be sitting in the White House, they are going to ebb and flow. Get your popcorn ready. Will the Trump debate Kamala happen on the 10th of September? The day before 9-11. Telegram banned by EU country before October. Holy moly. Pavel Durov released in August. Again, I'm not going to go into this again. I commented this, commented on this. His ability to get a fair legal shake. You have a much better opportunity to do that if you are outside of prison. Next up, we're just going to roll right through some stuff. So these are some news things that also caught my attention. We know that was arrested. We just spoke about this. Oasis they are going to possibly get back together. If you have ever sat on a wonder wall or wondered what it is, you will have to wonder no more. Ruth Jersey sales. So this is if right we're on the collectible space. The Babe Ruth Jersey, it's called the shot Jersey where he basically stood on home plate and he pointed and he said, that is where I'm gonna send this home run and bam, he did it. So all this happened in the 1932 World Series. This jersey just sold for $24 million. It is nice to see that happen. And I just want to touch on this again. We saw a market float off this, right, when Jerome Powell had his rate cut announcement at the symposium. We're just seeing a bit of a rebound. It's August. It's the middle of the summer. Do not get your panties in a bunch. 
Next up, we are going to go through some of the things. Again, this was a list that was put out this morning, but some of these tokens still hold true, though we have seen a bunch of retrace. The biggest gainers were Sundog Flux, Echelon Prime, Pepe Coin, and Original Trail. Sundog, again, this is this Justin Sun ecosystem. It was up, I think, 43% on day one. Then it had a nice retrace of about 18% where people were like unsure where this would go. And a bunch of people decided to dump their bags. And then it just absolutely ripped. So it has continued to flow. Um, so Sundog is taken up. The Sun token is down. So this might be an interesting argument. If you are a believer in this ecosystem and where it goes, we saw this same thing happen with Sundog. It went up, we saw a retrace before it absolutely went parabolic. Is this the Sun retrace before it goes parabolic? All right, let's get into some more stuff. So my call for this morning was Bubble Buddy token. I, it's been five days in a row that we've called this. I think day one, we were coming in. Day one, it was about $138,000. Day two, $764,000. Day three, $2 million market cap. Day four, $3.5 million market cap. Day five, $3.9 million market cap. And we are going to check in. Let's check in on BB first. So here's what we did on BB. So I basically created a, a limit order, right? I set sell order. Basically, I want to run one Solana up to 100. So I have gotten to the point where now I'm working with three Solana. So yesterday, I had three Solana, and I ran this up as much as I could. And this morning, I started looking at this chart, and I picked a spot, and I, sell, I set a limit order here to sell absolutely everything. So I started with three Solana. I think I sold 5.47 Solana this morning. And I cashed out. And right, I, not that I wanted to get out of this token. I just saw this pattern reversal coming. So I picked a good spot. I got out of it. I turned three Solana into 5.4 whatever. I took... Now, basically, I want to take that three Solana and reinvest it back into this wallet. Now, instead of playing with one Solana, now I have three Solana to make bigger plays. So what did I do with this three Solana? I set my first limit buy order when the price started to drop. I have been DCAing back into this. I think it might possibly drop. I don't, I don't know. We might get in high 2 million range before we have a retrace. And this token seems to just take off at night. This has been a really interesting token to trade because it defies gravity. It just continues to go up. So currently it is at a $3.3 million market cap in the last 24 hours. So from my call this morning, we're actually down. So it, it actually ran up on the 24 hours. It's 14%. I do a see a little retrace here. I am going to DCA into this. Um, and I think it will go. I think it goes north again this evening. Now, some of the other calls I've made. Kobe, this has been on a downtrend for uh, a minute here, but I have been buying this dip. So again, I, I will reach a point and I will pick a sell spot. I will sell all the tokens. I will kind of take out the profits and then I will be, and I'll try and buy a dip. And I bought this dip and I try and work my way up and it's continuing to dip. So some of my profits that I took out of BB, I put into Kobe again, and I'm just continuing to buy this dip because I still believe in this. This currently has a $3.76 million market cap. Then some of the profits I also put back into FWOG, F-W-O-G. This is one of my calls. You know, I mean, it's probably been, I don't know, 10 days went out, but this has just done absolutely really well i mean I, I this like again this is just a token that continues to perform. so flog i love bb i love kobe i love these are tokens that i'm in then i also took some profits and i went to magic eden which i haven't done for a bit and i think i bought eight or i think i bought eight if hoodies um they were priced at about 0.5 solana at the t so they're up a bit and it's interesting, they have an interesting ecosystem associated with this collection. So I begin to do some research and 
They have this ecosystem where you can put clothes on your PFP character from all these other collections. It's interesting. I have not seen anything like this. It is, it's, it's worth a scratch and sniff. So I have a bunch of these at the moment, so we're seeing what happens. In the last day, there have been 821 trades in the last day. It's gone up about 116%. I don't know if it will continue on that same arc, but it's new to the game. The, the PFPs are decent. The team I listened in today started scratching the surface. So I could see these running up to three or four Solana in a relatively short amount of time. So they seem pretty cheap to get in right now. These are just gambles that I'm making right now. So I'm just keeping you guys abreast of stupid shit that I'm doing. Okay, next up, we are gonna roll on to the next bit, super sauce. Um, what do we got? So again, continuing to monitor the Bitcoin in relation to who will be in the White House today, the price of Bitcoin at the time of the recording or at the time of the report was $63,920. Um, and it was a dead heat, but Bitcoin had dropped in that frame. Next up, ClueCoin. So this is super interesting. ClueCoin, there was a pretty big scam um, last year. So the people that were involved in this scam got by all the authorities and in essence, what the FBI is going to do is they are going to basically send out $1.14 million in NFTs to the wallets of people that were involved in this scam. So I think it's really interesting to see um, the person that was um, caught up in this. His name is Austin Taylor, and he pled to wire fraud after mis misusing ICO funds for personal ventures, including a shit ton of online gambling that he clearly did not do very well. His sentencing comes up on the 31st of 2024. Happy Halloween to that motherfucker because he is looking at 20 years in La Huscao. Now, Solana, we want to see this continue on its bull run. Can it stay above 155? I did this report this morning. Solana, yes, we're at 157. We'll take a bit of red. So we are looking at a bunch of stuff, the 100 our simple moving average resistance bottoms tops all kinds of shit it all goes out there you know like i mean it's just a red day we're fine with this shit subsec because we're going to have some reports on some things that might possibly move the market next up we have our super duper friend vitalik buterin the giga chad he is he's Interesting. So I've, I've heard a couple schools of thought. So there's in the ecosystem that would prefer he just just kind of say less. You do so much, just say less. Satoshi just says less to anything or they don't say anything. But, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan of Vitalik. The more time he's on the timeline, I think the more it humanizes him as an individual, and it sheds a different light on the entire ecosystem, which I loved. Anyway, Vitalik has expressed interest for his for his love with decentralized dApps um, and DEXs. He has also become a USDC for its convenience in international transactions, which makes a ton of sense. And he also likes RAI. Um, these are just interesting vehicles that work globally super fast super fr super friction free cheap and no middleman so these vehicles should be explored i am a fan of doing all of that work next up a recent survey by a data psychologist found that women view crypto bros as one of the least attractive groups just behind anime cosplay and reading comic books in public. Only 23.1% of female respondents found crypto bros attractive, making it the second most unattractive nerd hobby after collecting Basie merchandise. Okay, Telegram has kind of put out a humdrum message saying, don't shut us, we are with all of EU laws. Is Pavel, you, I mean, like, what, what is happening, right? It, 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 it will come out on that we haven't got a precise view of this, 
but it's just it's just horrendous to me so and and this is a tactic that Ali uses and she tries to under the bus with this as well she throws in terrorist activity child pornography all related to crypto it seems like over in eastern europe and that whole area they're trying to do the same thing right pavel they brought in some child charges we just saw Andrew Tate dealing with some child charges, all of these things. Is this a way that they are actually trying to crack down on people? Or is there a fucking story behind this shit? If there is, like, tell us. Like, this is interesting. If they're, if it's not, it's just horse shit. You're just to smear people. When this type of shit happens, you are smearing their relationship. So I hope there's ammunition. It's, it's really interesting, the tactics that are at play here. I hope um, Pavel, well, there is a growing group of people that are kind of behind him. I know that there is a bunch of financing that is up to help him. He is already financially capable to take care of all of these matters. Um, but the future is, is definitely rocky, especially when you're behind bars. Next up, I have a new, the listing of the Eurite, which is the UO excuse me, E-U-R-I. It is the first Mika-compliant bank-backed stablecoin. It is launched by the Luxembourg-based Luxembourg -based banking circle. Spot trading pairs on the Euro, the Euri slash USDT will open on the 28th. So that's two days from now. And withdrawals will be available the following day. So it's interesting to see these coins go into play. Bitcoin circle, everybody's going to be involved with this. So Shiba Inu, the people that love Shiba, they love Shiba. There is supposed to be some neat stuff happening with the Dow coming down the pike that will absolutely give people some, some voice in the movement forward that the community takes. I think these cultural council is what they're going for. They're going to have a charity council. There's going to be a bunch of different initiatives to get the community engaged, active, and promote the message that they are trying to promote. So I love seeing people put the, the boots to the ground. Like it's time to put people to work. It really is. Next up, we have just holder of WIF. He just doubled down, I guess, over the weekend, and he scooped another 1.5 million USD value of WIF, adding to his bags. I think his WIF comes in at about $53 million at price. So he's, he's doing pretty well on this. He's doing well on this trade. His profits are, uh, yeah, it just makes me sad. I mean, I'm happy for you that your profits are so prof Yay. Yay. Okay, next up, Bunstrats, Tom Lee, he believes that financial markets are in Donald Trump making it into the White House, aka crypto prices are starting to move up. Companies are deciding to start make plans about possibly establishing their companies moving forward post election. So is this happening? Um, the victory would shake things up for either side, whoever is going to be sitting in that chair here, right? Um, it's, it's I, I don't know. It is interesting to see people really placing bets on the thought that in the White House. I think the debates, and I think, to me, the roadmap that is in front of us favors Donald Trump. Um, as far as the debates go, as far as the way this might play out. So I also think that more geopolitical tension that arises, not only for the U.S. to deal with, but just globally, right? I think, unfortunately, those things play into Trump's favor because I think he, as a military-minded individual, is going to make different decisions than Kamala would make as a military-minded individual. And I don't know this for a fact, but that would just be my guess. So we are going to see a bunch of things come to play in where your vote is cast. And I just want to say this to younger people and people that have maybe voted once or twice. Your vote 
right? It's just you in the ballot box. That's for one. So that's when you make the decision. Second, your political party is not your home team. You do not have to root for the same political party throughout your life. You need to investigate the issues that make sense to you every four years because they will change dramatically. Your allegiance belongs to your beliefs, nobody else. That's the amazing thing about getting to vote in a ballot box is you could live in a family and eat dinner with your parents that are extremely Republican. And when you get in the ballot box, you vote Democratic. And that's all right. And that's awesome. But I implore you to pick issues, do some research, figure out what makes sense to you. Think about the decisions you make. If we break out into war, if there's a huge pandemic, if we get invaded, if we, I, I don't know, if, if there's a shortage of fuel, who do you want dealing with these issues, right? It, whether the United States can do a prosperous time or it deals with a, a difficult time, who do you want the driver's seat getting us to the next four years? Think about it. So all of this stuff is really important. We have stocks to think about, small caps, large caps. We've got crypto to think about. We've got taxes. If you are in the service industry, Kamala wants to your tips. Trump says they're yours, right? These little differences, especially if you're in the working class and you fucking, if every day makes a difference, these issues make a big difference. And they will compound over the next four years. The decisions you make, you will have to deal with them for the next four years. So think about that as well. Okay, I don't want to get into a bunch of stuff, but I would say that Tom Funster has a bunch of interesting, they do a bunch of wonderful analytical stuff as a company. They have a bunch of amazing clients. So I enjoy cycling around and seeing what he and his company are thinking about things. Next up, the anticipated altcoin season is finally gaining momentum. Tron, TRX, BNB chain, BSC, Bitcoin's potential close above $60,000 in August could further fuel the crypto bull run in the coming months. So if we think about this, August is coming to a close. We really need a monthly close for Bitcoin above 60000 about $180, I think, just off the top of my head. But these numbers, while they're not dramatically important, they do set a precedent for how we're going to move in to the upcoming months. So keep all of this in mind as you guys are traversing all your shit. If you guys are craving crypto clarity, please subscribe to my Substack. Wording, rare bits may cause hodling.